I am going to show you some really basic things to remember as you are writing your research essays. You are often inclined as students to start at the beginning of the essay and go straight through to the end as if the writing process were linear. But that's really not the way a research essay goes, um, at least not smoothly. Um, one method that I teach in my English 101 classes is the quote burger method for putting sources into body paragraphs using all the elements that are required for MLA format. One of the things that students are resistant to do, however, is to start with the research and the information they find from their sources uh, because they feel like they have to basically have the whole essay laid out and figured out exactly what they want to say, like doing an outline first and then doing the research, which is a huge mistake, I think, um, because you don't really know what you want to say in a college level essay until you have done the research. One of the key factors of writing in a college class is to interact with scholars who have been researching the topic you've been assigned and writing about that topic for years. They are the experts. And so what you want to do is research what they have already written and see what they say and see how you can be in conversation with them in writing. So your essay is really a conversation with scholars when you are using sources. So when I am preparing to write an essay, I know the first thing I need to do is to really get comfortable with what other people are saying about the topic. So that means I have to do the research first. And as I'm doing my research, I write down or highlight or copy and paste to a Word document the quotations from those sources that make me think, that either make me think, well, I don't agree with that, or make me think, oh, I absolutely agree with that. But either way, I want quotations from the sources that I can be in conversation with. I want to quote things that I can say more about. I don't want to quote things that I could have come up with on my own as a college student or as a person walking around or even as an English instructor. I need to find things in my research that make me say, oh wow, that's interesting. I wonder if this person has thought of it this other way. or. That's interesting, I don't agree, because yesterday I read this research that says this other thing. So I can interact with it either using other sources I have found or what I have learned through my research, but I really want to be able to show off my critical thinking skills when I'm including information from a source, either to show how I have taken that writing from the source a step further and analyzed it and applied it to my topic in a new way or in a way that's unique to me, or by having that conversation with multiple sources and interjecting my own ideas into it as well. So that's really the purpose of academic writing. That's what instructors mean when they say, show your critical thinking skills. So what are your thoughts without saying, I think, or in my opinion, just say, this is wrong, or this could be better if it was looked at in this new way. So when I'm doing research, the first thing I do is find my sources, and I go ahead and do the works cited first. Then I will find quotations that are meaningful to me and are something I can say more about. Then, like I said, I copy and paste that quotation into a Word document 
and I will go ahead and write the thing that I have more to say there, just as the preliminary, this is maybe not an idea or a sentence or two that's going in the essay, but I just want to remember why I chose this quotation to, to copy and paste into my research document. Um, of course, I've, I'm doing the work cited as I go, and I make the font a little different between what the quotation is and what my thoughts are so that I don't get them confused. I don't want to accidentally be paraphrasing something um, or, or claiming that some idea or wording is my own. So I, I'm careful to make my font a little different when I make my own notes. Or you could copy and paste the quotations into a document, print it, and then handwrite your notes, and that way you would know exactly which writing was yours and which was from the source. Um, then I will format the quotation. Oftentimes, go ahead and add, once I'm ready to uh, have it prepared for using in a source or in an essay, I'll go ahead and put the signal phrase, um, do the parenthetical citation, which I will know how to do only after I have done the work cited for that source. Because I know in my parenthetical citation, I have to use whatever is first in the work cited for that source in the parenthetical citation. If you use longer quotations, make sure that you do the block quotation format. Um, I will include this document in the link in the notes below the video as well so you can see. Um, Purdue OWL is a great source for figuring out formatting issues or even basic writing guidelines. Make sure that you look at the MLA section and not the APA section for English classes. Um, this goes step by step through the body paragraphs with signal phrases, parenthetical citation, and once the quotation is correctly formatted using an introductory phrase, the quotation, and the parenthetical citation. After that, I have my reiteration of the quote in my own words because I really want to highlight for my reader what I thought the main idea of that quotation was or the thing that I'm going to be addressing in the rest of the paragraph. What, what part of that is the thing that I either agree with so much I want to highlight it or I disagree with enough that I am going to highlight it. So that's the next sentence. And then, then in the paragraph where I have a quotation, this is a really basic style that I use for 101, I kind of frame the whole uh, source discussion, the, the interaction with that quoted source with a main idea sentence that goes at the top of the paragraph and a concluding sentence that explains how the quotation that I have cited and interacted with, discussed more in detail and highlighted specific parts, um, how does that relate back to the main idea of the paragraph? So I need to end my paragraph making sure that is clear for the reader and also in one or more sentences, explain how what I have discussed in the body paragraph relates back to the thesis, why it is important. That is often called the so what part of the paragraph. So once I have written my body paragraphs, um, I may go back through at that point and go ahead and use transition sentences or transition words to sort of make everything flow a little better. And then once I have all my body paragraphs, I will go back and write the introduction. Because you don't really know what you're introducing until you have written the body of the essay. And usually when I'm writing the body of my essay and including my research, I will write things that I didn't know that I knew. The act of writing is a way of discovering new things, having new thoughts. That is critical thinking. That is college level thinking. You want to surprise yourself 
by teaching yourself things you didn't even know until you sat down, slowed down, and interacted with the research. So th that's what you are doing with your body paragraphs. You're in conversation with scholars, with researchers. So only then are you ready to really introduce your topic. And oftentimes, I will change my thesis a few times. That's why we talk about a working thesis. Um, once I'm writing the body paragraphs and I'm really starting to have original thoughts about the topic, um, that's when I know that, oh, I need to refine my thesis so that it reflects this, this profound idea I have come up with to write about. And this argument, this new argument that I have come up with to defend. And that is a thesis. Uh, the thesis in an introduction is the last sentence in an introduction or a couple of sentences sometimes. Um, that, that is allowable in some circumstances. Um, but to write a, an introduction from start to finish, um, again, I don't do this in a linear method. I will start with the writing of the thesis. In fact, I write two thesis statements and then I walk away from them and then I come back and the better thesis statement will go at the end of my introduction and the second place winner of the thesis statement contest will go at the beginning of my conclusion because that is another place that you need the thesis statement. It just needs to be said in a new way. Um, then the basics of writing an introduction are getting the attention of your reader, starting with a hook. That's the attention grabber. It should be a general idea. Um, so you shouldn't be talking so specifically that in your hook that you feel make the reader feel like they are lost or have missed something or should have known more about the topic before picking up your paper. You don't want to turn a person away from your written conversation, which is what your paper is, by starting in the middle. It would be like walking up to a group of friends who are already talking about something and don't bother to catch you up or to start with something general. So your hook should be fairly general, but also attention grabbing. Then you're going to bridge to the thesis by giving some context and background for the question your thesis answers. And then, of course, write your thesis. And a conclusion paragraph is just like an upside down introductory paragraph. So start with your thesis written in a new way. And I've already mentioned how I tend to have a thesis statement contest. Write a thesis statement, go to a blank screen, write another thesis statement, go away, have a snack, come back, look at it with fresh eyes so I can see. Usually it's the second one I have written that is the winner. I've gotten a warm up with the first one, but that's not always the case. So make the better one the end of your introduction and the second better one in the beginning of the conclusion. Then you're going to review your main points. Uh, just touch on those things to remind the reader these are the things that helped prove my thesis. And then the big so what at the end of your conclusion will um, be a sentence or two or three that leaves your reader feeling convinced that what you have argued is true and they should believe a certain thing or act a certain way or be able to use your argument or the points made in your argument to explore a work of literature further or apply to life in a new circumstance. So that is a basic rundown of how to write an essay that includes research at a college level.